Hey guys, Corbin here, and I'm going to talk about tramming my spindle so I get accurate cuts on my Avid CNC, and let's get right into it. So the basic things that we'll need to tram the spindle, we're going to need a dial test indicator, we're going to need something to shim up uh, a flat piece, and you can use tape, you can use paper, and you can also use some shims like these thickness feelers. You're going to need something that's perfectly flat, like a granite surface plate, or you can use a piece of glass. The granite plate is going to be the most level and precise. A piece of glass is smooth, and I would use that second. I should also acknowledge that you can buy a dedicated tramming system for around $100, but I find a $40 dial test indicator to be cheaper and more useful in other situations. Okay, so there are two steps to tram the head on a CNC machine. The first step is we're going to want to get our granite surface plate or a piece of glass to be perfectly level with regards to one point on the machine. We're going to do that by jogging the machine to three different points and leveling it. The second step is we're not going to jog the machine anymore and we're going to pick, uh, we're going to rotate the dial test indicator around the spindle to get the spindle perfectly level with regards to that surface plate. First I'm going to level it with regards to the spindle. I attach the dial test indicator to the to the spindle itself and not the tool that spins. far as I can in the corner, go down till it reads the value, doesn't matter what it reads, just need to read something, zero it out, jog it to the other corners and see how off I am, so this is dead level, much more precise than a piece of melamine. This is off by a couple thousands. See, it needs to go up by about two thousands. All right, so that's perfectly level. Take the dial test indicator off of the spindle there, get it up higher. Attach it to the tool. Okay, so we want to be able to sweep an arc with it. And we want the arc to sweep from one side to the other. Now I'll bring the Z down until it shows the value. Alright, so now it's right at zero. So once it's right at zero, if we want to align it on the y-axis, we're going to sweep it from this side all the way to the back side and see what the difference is. Well, first of all, I could have, looks like I could have a larger sweep area because my circle that's making is, is really small. So um, let's get it, have a wider sweep area by moving the y. All right, so here it's sweeping as large of an area as I can get on a small granite plate. First, we'll tram along the y-axis, shimming the spindle forwards or backwards. I'll use the dial test indicator to compare these two points along the y-axis. Imagine the spindle is tilted towards the back. The dial test indicator will read larger here and smaller here. We'll need to shim it here. Similarly, if it is tilted towards the front, the dial test indicator would read larger here and smaller here, and we need to shim it here. After shimming a bit, I sweep the dial indicator back and forth and repeat the process of shimming until it reads the same values at the two points. Use non-compressible shims like dedicated machinist shims, aluminum foil, or aluminum tape. I put my shim between the two plates here. 
determine the x-axis is done the same way. You just sweep along two points of the x-axis side of the granite block. With an Avid CNC tramming plate, you don't need to shim anything. You loosen all the bolts and adjust the eccentric bolt to tilt the spindle left and right. Once you do have your spindle trammed, the next thing you need to ensure is that uh, everything is square. And that's by adjusting the sensor uh, positions, the two on the side of the y-axis. And honestly, the only way I did this is I ensured that the red little plate wasn't pushing out by hitting the linear rails. And I used my micrometers to measure the distance out here and set them to exactly the same value. By doing that, assuming my table is very square, I was getting really good cuts right off the bat. Okay, so that's a quick lowdown on how I trammed my spindle before I did any cuts. After you tram it, you can follow Avid's directions to verify that when you do cuts, it doesn't give any ridges in the piece, and uh, then you know you're good to go.